sage, there was nothing else that he could do. We were trapped in a position that we were fighting for his life. And that's all that we could do, turn it over to people who would make awareness for us. And I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful to you and to the, um, the Just Moms group and to the Cold Water Creek folks. Um, it's been really difficult, I think, for them to um, map all of that out and to prove that people are getting sick <coughs> from the landfill and getting sick from the creek. Um, and when I found out about what was happening, Jonas had been hospitalized for some time, for several months. In fact, I wanted to think we were almost a year into it when I found out. And I was in the hospital that day, and I remember very vividly finding out about it, thinking, this is crazy. And I went to the Facebook site, and here were all of my high school friends that had cancer, that were having children with cancer that had conjoined twins that were just unusual uh, appendix cancers. One of my friend's 13-year-old daughters was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Why would a 13-year-old have thyroid cancer? Her family didn't have history of that. Um, and Why would a 13-year-old have urine sarcoma? Right, and my son had urine sarcoma. Um, his cancer was between the brain and the sinuses, so it was inoperable. And he, I don't know if you could tell in the hospital that he had 87 stitches in his head mm -hmm. uh, where they had just removed a large portion of a tumor uh, there at the end trying to stop it and it kept growing. But in the hospital that day when I found out, I met three other moms from the North County area there with children. And I, I sent them a message to the Coldwater Creek women. I said, how can you map this when half of us have moved away? And our kids are out here having cancer, and in different states having cancer. The government wouldn't count those. They're only counting the people who are living there by the creek. Uh, I think it was Anne, I don't know where you are right now, Anne had explained to me that when, when uh, women are born, you have as many eggs in you as you're going to have in your whole life. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. Same word. <laughs> <laughs> this is how, I, how entrenched I am in not thought. I'm sorry. And and, and so, I, the more I think about it, the more I understand that 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 had a, living there had that effect on my eggs. And so that you know, um, not all of them obviously. My, my beautiful daughter's here today. I have to say, this is my daughter. Right here. So, I'm sorry. I'll keep talking if I don't get this look up. Okay. So, so your son or your kids never lived in St. Louis? No, but, no, but we visited often. My mother had a daycare center in St. Louis, and they would go spend summers with my mom. In fact, when we talk about the parks being contaminated, uh, the last time that I was there with my small children and my son had stayed the summer with my mom, he was still in diapers, and he... Um, it had rained and flooded that day, and the park was full of water. I don't know if you remember this. You were there. And he was stomping around in all the water, and my mom just stripped him down to his diapers and said, that's what little ones do. Just let him do it. And he built mud pies and all sorts of things. So. I think also the question is, and this is about my day grade, but I think when someone is exposed at a young age, if you are exposed to those radio nuclei, how does it genetically alter you? so that in your future activities take place like that and uh, what happens in you. So that's also a question. It's not a matter of direct contact every day in your life, but if something does affect you, then you end up, no matter where you go, to be with you. Right, right. And could you explain, like you told me, about what uh, genetic um, link there is to the type of cancer that you have? In Ewing sarcoma, and I, and I want to start back just a step from that, when your child develops cancer, their first thing is not to say, and you would expect this, that they come to you in the hospital and say, have you been exposed to this? Do you have this in your home? Have you come in contact with X, Y, or Z? We need, do you have other children living in the house? We need to check this out. But no one does that. There's no government agency that looks into that. The hospital doesn't, and not that they don't care, but they're there to cure your child. And, and they, the hospitals we worked with were wonderful uh, at doing that, working. Uh, they were compassionate and had the, the best information and the best science that can be provided. Uh, but no one comes to check that. 
what they did tell us is that my son had a Ewing sarcoma, which is genetic, but it's not hereditary, which means he didn't get it from his parents. But somehow, uh, sometimes shortly after birth is what they say, um, in the years shortly after birth, chromosome number 11 and chromosome number 22 trade places. And that's something that ionizing radiation does, which is what is found in the and in the creek. And I'd like to say that things are moving in the right direction, and, and everyone is trying to be very hopeful, because the government is really working to clean up the creek in my hometown, which is great. They're cleaning up around the creek, but we tramped through the creek. We took it into our homes. No one is evaluating that. Um, and the government does any, doesn't have anywhere to put the waste if they do dig it out of that landfill. There's nowhere for it to go. Rebecca might be able to speak to that. Well, should we, I'm sure, should, should people probably have those questions? Yeah. Would you do me a favor and repeat the people's yes, questions? Yes, sure, of course, of course, yeah. <coughs> Were there any whistleblowers involved, and were you able to gain the assistance of Washington University Medical School or St. Louis University Medical School? So the question is, did, was there a whistleblower at all that we relied on? And the second question was, I guess, have any of the universities that we work with, right, in terms of SLU? Um, so Dan Norris, the gentleman that appears in the film and speaks about the landfill, what happened was he wrote an open letter to the public um, when he left his job at the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. And in his letter, he wrote a scathing letter, and I welcome all of you to look it up, where um, he believed, and the reason why he wrote this letter was he believed that the public were being kept from important information about what was coming out of that landfill and how toxic it was. And he felt that the Missouri Department of Natural Resources was keeping information from the public, that there was some sort of collusion that went on, that the governor at the time, Nixon, was really squelching and telling people, do not speak to anybody or there will be repercussions. So once he left, he wrote this open letter. And Dan very generously decided, he didn't speak on camera with anybody, but he did decide to speak with us. So he came back to town. And we did that, we did a nine, what was it? A six hour interview. So it's very short, but we have several hours of very detailed information that he gave us. And those photographs that you see of the landfill, he provided those. We didn't know their existence, nor when we asked for them, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources said, oh yeah, we have some of them, but we don't have all of them, we don't know where they are, you know, that kind of thing. So luckily, we were able to see what we needed first. And then FOIA them. What was his name again, this gentleman? Dan Norris. Dan Norris. Yes, if you, I, I mean, I believe the letter came out in January of 2015. If you look up, it, and he published it through the St. Louis Post Dispatch. So if you look him up in the open letter, you, you can find it. You think still alive? Sorry? Is he still alive? He's still alive. He's still alive. Well, less than my last book. Um, in terms of the other question, which was, um, you know, the universities. So this is so this is when the rubber hits the road in a way. Now that the film is out, we had our premiere in St. Louis. We invited the hospitals to come. We have shown the film to staff. So when you say that there's a long time when you go in and the doctors would treat your cancer, there was no real taking of records, asking, there was no real awareness of the Coldwater Creek and that stuff. But what's, what we're now starting to do is we want to engage with hospitals to make their staff aware, nurses, doctors, whatever, and, and, and I don't know how one can go about it, we're just at the infancy stages of this, but the hospitals use the film and educate their people. When people come in and they are from that area, can they screen them or can they get down to the bottom of things a bit more? So we're just starting that now, but that's part of the reason how we want to use the film and outreach. So while we haven't engaged, with, but we're now just doing it, yeah, outreach to answer your question. Uh, yes, I was wondering how they go about cleaning it up because it's radioactive. How do how do you clean up radioactive particles when it's dispensed in the environment? 
And the other part of it is how could, uh, I don't know why Republic uh, was the one that had, were they the ones that were control of the nuclear waste? Uh, okay, yeah. So and if so, how come they don't pay for these people to move? Uh, well, now, you're trying to give me a hard time now. <laughs> these are all really great questions. So let me try and re re repeat for you. So the first question was, how, how do they clean up okay. nuclear waste? How do you clean up radionuclides? Well, you should ask the Army Corps of Engineers food scrap program, because the only people that are mandated to do this is the food scrap program, which is the Army Corps of Engineers. Their mandate in St. Louis is to clean up radioactive waste. That's what they do. So they have a system, they have contractors, they come in and they do it in an very structured way. But it's literally remediation. You dig it up. You test for it, you find it, and then you coordinate, and then you dig it up. Now what you bring up, a very interesting point, because when they were digging things up, and the pit was open, it would rain. Yeah. So, In the not all the time, blood. but yeah. I noticed it and I went, I hope they finished remediating this because and where it's got water it? in it. Where does it go? Well, it's a to place. another dump? Another place. Watch <laughs> rain when it rains really hard. Well. Okay, <laughs> right. So, where did they take it to? It went to yeah. the floor. Oh, okay, so I'll get to that. So, that's how you, you get the Army Corps of Engineers to do it to you, for you. That's the first question. Your second question is? Well, I mean, it's brought up there, it's like they dig this stuff up, where does it go then? So if you saw in the film, they work with U.S. Ecology, which is in Idaho. So if you look up U.S. Ecology in Idaho, the company, it's like in the southern, western part of the state, near a nature preserve. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. So it's U.S. Ecology in, in the state of Idaho. And then your final one, which was a good question. And I'm was, uh, uh, if the public uh, trash people yeah. were the ones that okay. put that nuclear waste there, okay, they were stop. paid to do okay, that, right? So your question is, what is Republic Services doing and are they in charge? Yeah. Okay. Number one, it's very important to understand. All of this, everyone has inherited this from the U.S. government, from the Manhattan Project. So Republic Services, the EPA, are not at fault for this stuff being here. Those who are at fault are the Department of Energy, U.S. Government Atomic Energy Commission, which became the NRC, which then got split into the DOE, blah, 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 blah. And the second, um, group that are responsible is the Cotter Corporation. Now, and we have documents, you know, that go back and forth. When the United States sold this stuff, there was a, I believe there was a clause in the contract where if there was residual it could be brought back. But that was reneged upon, because I think it was environmentally unsound. So by the time the Cotter Corporation got this product, they said to the government, well, we, we're done. We, this is left over. Can you take it back? The government said, no, your problem. So what do you think Cotter Corporation did with the residual? They dumped it in the Westlake landfill illegally. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are a responsible party at the landfill. There are three responsible parties. <clears throat> I hope I'm accurate. I'm sure I am. I spent three years in this. In case something changed, I'll to it. Formed Energy, Cotter Corporation, which is now absorbed by Exelon. And you've got the public services. Now, Republic Services came in and bought the landfill, right? But they didn't, they were the ones that dumped the radioactive waste there. So this was part of the land parcel they got. So now, in terms of jurisdiction, which we set up in the film, but I'll repeat in case, you know, a lot of information applies, so you may, it's hard to take it all in. The part of the landfill that has the radioactive waste in it, the EPA, the Department of Energy, pushed it over to make it a super fund program. So the EPA is now in control of that part. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources is in charge as a regulator of the Bridgeton side of the landfill where the fire is. So do you understand the dynamic? So there are two regulating authorities at that landfill. One is a state authority and the other is a federal group. And nobody's mm -hmm. taking responsibility for anything. I, you know, that's unfair. I mean, if you go out to your cars tonight, you guys park out here, <laughs> go look at the dumpster and see whose dumpster it is. <laughs> Number one. Number two. <laughs> Sorry. Number two, I think Republic Services has spent, I, I think they were on the books for 
over a hundred million. I mean, they've spent a lot of money to handle the situation. Mm. Yeah, we're, that's, we're going down a very right steep cliff here. But um, well, I will say this, in all fairness, from what I know, where public services spent a lot of money to try and deal with the situation. I think the issue is, when you have illegally dumped this kind of stuff in an unlined quarry, yeah. and I'm sure there's some engineers in the room, I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. So my question is, there's tons of people to blame. My question is, why did the Department of Energy come in when they knew the stuff was done? Why did they come in in the 70s and get it out right away? Right. Yeah. Why did they leave it there? Right. Super fund, it gets turned over to them, then the companies share the cost. It's a, it's the shenanigans are... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hi, Bert. Uh, Brian Rogers, Brian But that, the workers, 
uh, the reported workers that they found them in their home, on their toilet stool, on their pillows, on their carpets. She has been denied and she has uh, been uh, diagnosed with the lung problem. She's had part of a lung cut out. She had cancer, all this good stuff. And this stuff is happening in Kansas City right now. The reason that you're probably so surprised is because the people here aren't paying attention. You paid attention yes, in St. Sure. Louis. The cancer cluster study that you showed, the, the, yeah, when you saw the, right? the line going through, I've seen that study, and I know who was involved in that study. And that study goes all the way around to Malincroft, right. and you ought to see the cancer clusters that they have in St. Louis. Yeah. That's just part of it. What you saw was nothing compared to where it came from, Malincroft, Cancer cluster study, you could just throw a red ball from Malakoff, slide it all the way over to Clearwater Creek, mm -hmm. all around that area. It's bad, and I know it's bad. We're, we want to help you. So, you know, that's, that's what I want to get to, because I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, I'm trying to think quick about what to do. You know, that's part of the problem is, you know, if the workers are tested and found, they have a mechanism for workers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have a mechanism for citizens. Right. So, but what I think would be interesting is if you have the same problem out here, and there are people where the stuff is on their toilet seats, and they have proof of that, the only thing I can think of is joining or connecting to the people in St. Louis and making this a, you know, if it's just St. Louis, blah, blah, blah. But if it's statewide, it's nationwide. It, of course it's nationwide, but in, let's just think Missouri for a minute. Let's just stay local. I, I mean, what I would suggest is, and I know we're all not social media people and we don't have Facebook and I'm like, I'm older than Moses, you know, so I don't do all this stuff, right? But people are now connecting through the Facebook pages, whether it's Coldwater Creek or it's the Just Moms STL. They are the citizen group that is getting together, that is working to fight this. So what I may suggest is if everyone in Kansas City with this problem could connect to them via that and via presence, that's like getting more people, powers and numbers. Yeah, well, just like I said, our report that where they found it in the home homes came from the government themselves. Right. Now, we're, we're having a film here, September the 16th, uh, the other the safe side of the fence. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, right. That's Malincroft. Malincroft was the one that supplied, us, no. supplied our uranium billets that the guy was picking up and machining. Right. I machine those billets here in Kansas City. Okay. okay. So we're, we're willing to cooperate with you. We, want, we have connected with you. This is the second time that we're going to have that movie here. Yep. And people need to see your movie. People need to see this mm -hmm. because I could hardly sit here <coughs> because I'm watching the people that I work with for 32 years. <coughs> dropping like flies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Vietnam veterans and y'all, uh, 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 we were highly recruited to work at these places. So can I ask you a question? If, if I said to you, could you connect via the computer with people? Could you, could a, a mass of people do that? Could someone say, okay, give me your name and we will like work as a group to connect? Like, sure. If, sure, I'm already connected with some people. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I think even
and someone had said something about follow the money, and that might be the turning point in this, is that I also found out recently that the nuclear waste, they really have nowhere for it to go. They're talking about putting it all in Yucca Mountain, which is the, uh, where they want to put all the nuclear waste. Right, and that's a problem in itself, but no, they don't want it in their backyard. So right now, the government is paying the nuclear companies $32 million a day to store it on their properties all about the country. So there's nuclear waste being stored around the country right now. Why are we continuing to create more of yeah. this waste mm -hmm. until we can figure out what to do with what is already here? Mm -hmm. so we're a human petri dish in Florissant and in St. Louis and Richmond and St. Anne. Totally agree. And we've got to address it instead of keeping it quiet. That's why this movie is so intensely important. I was just going to say it in real quick. stepchild of the St. Louis County area. I mean, the white flight out of the area is pretty much complete, um, a lot of it, and and I think, I can't help but think that that has something to do with how this all happened. So, so Kathy was saying that North County is kind of the poor stepchild kind of in, in St. Louis, and that may be part of why it's like that? You know, listen, I'm not a historian and I'm not a Missourian, nor a St. Louis. But I think let's go, let's just take a step back for a bit. Back during the war. They needed tons and tons of enriched stuff. So they had tons and tons of byproduct. Now I'm crop ran out of room. Remember, this was a top secret um, project that had never been done before. And it had never been done at the pace that it was done. So they ran out of room where all this stuff could be. So the Army said, you know what? And at that time, it was the 40s, so I don't think all of these subdivisions were built up in North County. They just weren't. I mean, that was the 50s, the big defense, right? Rock Hudson, and that was later. So they um, moved the stuff out to the airport because that's where the Army had attractive land. So it wasn't like, let's move it to where all the poor people are. They literally just moved it to a facility where it was away from everybody and no one was out there. The mistakes they made was that they left it out, it rotted, it kept blue in the air, it was in piles, it went into a creek. And it went into a, and then they developed around it. And see what so so they made money. And, and they, well, of course, come on, that's what it's about. But so I I I I mean I think listen, we have a lot of racial divides, we have a lot of problems, right? I just don't think that was the case historically. I think it was just need, need, and need, and then all of a sudden you've got this stuff no one knows about it, it's gone everywhere, and you've got families moving in. There's a Pruitt Igo project. Well, the, well, the Pruitt Igo came later, correct? Excuse me, Ken Lock is right next to the airport. Yeah, look, yeah, so. yeah, you have to understand the migration. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not great. I, I haven't brought up racial stuff about none of this in Kansas City for 17 years, but you just did something. Yeah. Yeah. The Pruitt Igo projects were sprayed with radioactive material. The, right. people, were, the people were studied. Yeah. This, is, this mm -hmm. is the slum dwellers, so you can know who they were. But where do you think they were relocated? What? Ferguson. Right. Kinlock. Where's Ferguson? Where's Kinlock? Right there. Right. Yeah. We're all right there. We're all and they, there. Like, can I ask a question? What, what hmm. year was what, what years was this going on? The 50s, right? Was it the 50s? I'm sorry. What years was this going on? Was it the 50s? 50s? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the only point I'm making, listen, I'm not listen. I'm, I don't I don't pretend to know the whole um, migration issue, but I will say when they did move the stuff out there. It was the 40s, <laughs> yeah. and, they, and these places weren't yet built, but that well, doesn't mean they do what they did to people. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. They knew where they were building. I got you. Okay. I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Um, I was just curious, with Peace Works, and we appreciate both of you, everyone coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm curious from a media perspective of creating a documentary, we focus a lot on nuclear weapons issues. That's what we talked about here in Kansas City. We have the plant, we have the old plant. So I was curious, 
um, from your perspective of creating the documentary, is there intentional um, like non-use of the word nuclear weapons? That this waste comes from nuclear weapons, um, and then and, and I and I think it's a fantastic documentary, so I don't judge you on this. But was there a reason you chose not to sh um, kind of pinpoint? Oh, this is also what happened with this stuff. These people who were blown to bits and annihilated by nuclear weapons. And I'm so glad you focused on their stories because it's here and it's, yeah. it's how the American people will relate. Because they'll be like, oh, well, those are our enemies. You know, so um, I'm just curious your perspective on why you didn't share about the weapons and things. All the other lies. Yeah. Well, first of all, I wish we could have made a 10 part mini <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer to you. Because okay. this story, I mean, yeah. we're not, we weren't avoiding nuclear weapons. We weren't doing any of that. If anything, we had hours of, that we had to cut down and just tell the story. And what we ultimately felt was really important is what was missing was, you know, there's Tony West film, which is going to be here. Yeah is coming. Um, another gentleman made a film about it. There's films. Uh, this year and the last couple of years, there's been a film called Containment. There's a film called Uranium, The Bomb. There's been, because of the 75th anniversary, there's been a lot of nuclear, right? So for us, we felt we already were telling the tale of two communities. And we really felt that that's where we wanted to focus. By no means are we not using, like, we're not avoiding words. We just literally wanted to focus on people and just try and get into this as a case study, um, as, a, as a symbol of a community that is sick dying from something and then they find out what it is and then they have to fight the government and agencies to even get, forget justice, let's just, like forget the word justice, just some little truth, how about a little truth? How about that for change? So, so that's, you know, that was, we had to keep it focused and we wanted to keep it moving and we really wanted it to be representative of the people because then, of course, you get into the government and who did what and, and we just thought, we just wanted to be that. Well, these lives are just bad about you, so that's great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I want to get back to Maurice for a minute, but, but we'll take some other questions and I want to get to your point for a second. You know, it's, um, with, you were talking about the um, 75th anniversary of dropping the bomb. We dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but we dropped the bomb on ourselves. Yeah. And we're all paying for it right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, World War II is still killing people here in the, in the state of Truman. Are we talking about connecting with different groups? Um, I grew up in uh, North St. Louis. And uh, I have friends there, a high school friend and college friend who have now moved away from that place. But their children, you know, each other, one has MS, one has uh, another cancer, and they're both involved, I know, in group lawsuits. So I don't know who yeah. these lawsuits are. So how do you get all that? And they seem to have a lot of information, like a map of Coldwater Creek and all the, what, all the tributaries and how it went through all you know, the expanse of the thing. Yeah, well, the issue with lawsuits is this. We didn't want to do a lawsuit film because, number one, that takes 25 years to... No, I mean, disconnecting with these people. Just oh, yeah, we have, but, the, but this is the problem with lawsuits. When people are in the midst of a lawsuit, they're gagged or their lawyers tell them, please don't talk to me, and yes. rightfully so. Right. So we had people that actually we filmed with them couldn't, so we had to stop. So we just kind of stayed away from, from that a bit. Yeah. 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 Right. We had to. Yeah, so you this know. is from the, you know, these are kids that are... 50 plus years old. Right. So from then on, it should be a, a large number of, you know, you can talk to them personally and find out. Right. You want to talk about the outreach we're trying to do? Because, you know, Horace, you bring up an interesting point about, you know, who's being affected, where flight was, who knows, who doesn't know. And we're working on outreach to try and get the communities, even St. Louis, together. Like, there's this, how would you describe it? Because you're from here. So how would you, how would you say it? So I actually grew up in Coldwater Creek or Florissant, and I see that you guys do notice that there is some segregation in the film. And with the studies, they did leave out the African-American communities like Kim, uh, Ferguson, Florissant, Normandy, Jane. So that's what we're doing now. We're starting the outreach program, and we're going to do case studies in those areas, you know, to see, you know, it's not just this nucleus of, you know, Spanish Village and Florissant. And, you know, so we're going to, we are doing that.
really met. Yeah, we're beginning to start that process because you know you know way more about the community and who is who knows and who doesn't. And when I was looking into the health study, I was like, oh, there's a health study. And then I saw the zip code ending in 4-3 was left out. And I was like, why is the zip code left out? And then I looked up where the zip code was, and it was Ferguson. And it was like purple. Like, I was like, why is it left out? So, you know, then you, you know, once we saw that health study and saw what was left out, and then I looked at where the zip code was, I went, I mean, come on. So we thought once the film gets done, we have to get on desegregating this issue in a way. You know, I, and if I could just say something about that with the health study, uh, Janelle kind of hit on that in the film is that first they thought it was our high school. They thought our high school had a problem with it. And then it sort of just spread out from there and they kind of centralized on the creek. Originally, the government was not going to do any testing north of, the, of uh, Highway 70. They had to beg them to do just 10 studies, just pick out 10 pieces of soil north of the river. She said, anywhere you are, excuse me, north of the Highway 70, mm -hmm. and pick anywhere you want. And they really had to push and press and demand in the end. Um, my language is very passive. Hers was very strong. And so they had to demand that they do 10, just do 10. And all of them came back positive. So then they ended up doing something like 10,000. Um, yeah. soil, soil samples. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the beginning of the film, you see Dr. Schultz there on the tracks, and he's. Mm -hmm. We looked at the. Um, we got a tip that there were these very high levels, and, but when we looked at the record of decision by the Army Corps, it, that air, exact area, I think it had less than 30 picocuries or less than 60 picocuries, something like that. So we went out there. We got this tip. We said, Oh, let's do it. Dr. Schultz came out, and he did a test. And the thorium level came back 27,000. We alerted them to let them know, to which they said, oh yes, we know, we know, it's in an area that it, but I, I just compared it with their original statement was in their record of decision, and that's a hot spot that they didn't even have reported. So either people do want to find it or they don't, or you just can't, so you know what, you can't find, it's, it, God knows where this stuff is coming gone. And I have, um, there are a lot of people in the community, a lot who don't know what's going on. Then there are people who have been around a long time who have heard bits and pieces, and they still don't believe in it, even with very sick family members. They think, I don't have any way I can prove that. How can I connect? I have sisters who feel the same way. But the government wouldn't be in there spending tens of millions of dollars to clean all that up if there wasn't something very toxic and very damaging. You know, just at our last Q&A, and you may be saying to yourself, well, how can we help, what can we get right? So at the last Q&A we had, was it, didn't Don say something like, call up Scott, we call up the EPA? Like, they want people to call from Missouri and call directly to the EPA and demand relocation for the people around the premier of the landfill. At the same time, when we were, I was researching, back in 1995, Newt Gingrich's Congress slashed the FUSRAP budget. Mm. The FUSRAP program is the radioactive waste mm. cleanup. That was a year and a half before FUSRAP came to St. Louis to start cleaning. Mm. So another thing that I think needs to happen, and you heard the gentleman from the Army Corps say it, they need their funding restored. Because it's one pot of money that gets spread out throughout the country. So if more money is put into that, then other boats rise. So if money could be restored to the level where it was, perhaps the cleanup, they'd have more boots on the ground and the cleanup can happen faster. So these are two things that... Oh, uh, it, two words. Good job. And uh, about this fire, is it a chemical fire? Can it be put out? Um, so it's they the company likes to call it a subsurface smoldering event, right? So it's an event, you know, kind of like a matter, not an investigation, like a matter. <laughs> so okay, so so landfill fires are plentiful. 
It's just a chemical process that happens in landfills all over the place. So it's it, this is a normal occurrence that there are these you know chemical reactions. Um, the issue is this is a chemical reaction that wasn't stopped, wasn't reported to anyone for years that it was going on, and it's also near and very close to legacy radioactive waste. Now radiation doesn't burn, so it's not like a boom. That's not going to happen. But it vapors as we illustrated go up into the air and particles go. And as we finally got some of the EPA on record where they say, yeah, they've seen particles leave the site. Yeah. But can the fire be put out? From what I understand from landfill fire experts, yes. Unfortunately, these landfill fire experts could not go on camera because they're gagged by the Attorney General. <laughs> because there's a case pending against Republic and they are state experts. So from what I understand, yes. But at this point, it's extremely difficult. But then again, I'll defer to those who, you know, are landfill fire experts, and there are experts just who do landfill fires, so. Okay. <laughs> Well, one could argue the EPA has been defanged for decades. I mean, one could argue yes. that, right? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I cannot tell you what's going to happen. Um, I can't really answer your question because I don't know what, what, I don't know if the EPA is going to be defunded and I don't know if it's going to be shut down and I don't know who's going to be tossed out of office. I don't know. I mean, we're living in very uncertain, wacky times. It's a clown mm -hmm. car. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Um, yes, I don't want to get too ahead of myself just yet. Are you familiar with the Great Rivers Law Firm up there? Sorry? Are you familiar with the Great Rivers Law Firm in St. Louis? Great, liver, great rivers. rivers? Yes. No, I'm not familiar with them. Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you your, your uh, thoughts about the Tony West film, what you thought of it, and also, or well, maybe you haven't seen it. I have not seen oh, it. Oh, well, that's the other part of my question is, did you make a point of not seeing it before before <coughs> doing your own film? But, but you yeah, you can comment on that, but Maurice in the meantime came over and wanted to be a uh, stress about what's going on with here in the Army Corps of Engineers and the landfill here at the, at the federal complex. Okay. So uh, they've just, uh, okay. uh, um, agreed to transfer half of the federal complex, roughly half, I don't know uh -huh. exactly, to this third party center point. Uh, to, and they say they can all make it into a, you know, a, a happy, wonderful, thriving community and all that. The other half is, yes, the other half is still being controlled by the GSA, government services. Mm -hmm. And that includes a landfill that's been there since the 40s a landfill on the site of where a weapons plant was. So when I inquired a little bit about it from the NSA, like what's out there, oh, you know, explosives and things like that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and so what we were told at that one of the more recent public meetings was that, um, was, uh, that um, the Army Corps of Engineers is currently, currently looking like they didn't say reconnaissance. They're not actually remedying the situation. Okay. They're triaging the situation, I guess, to see how bad it is. And, and okay, so right they're, just, they're, they're characterizing the site right now. So yeah. Public relations. Yeah. 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 This was a competent APC okay. landfill. Okay. I don't know what the Atomic Energy Commission handles. And what they put in landfills. Right. But thank you very much. I mean, we got our stuff from Malakoff. I machine the stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, and they, and all of a sudden, they find uranium outside the plant after 70 years. Um, can I make a suggestion? Hmm. If you want to know what the, the Atomic Energy Commission is no longer an entity, I know, it, yeah. you know, right? You said, yeah. If you want to know about the Atomic Energy's behavior and they, the way they behave during the years. I have a book for you, Plutopia. <laughs> it will educate you about Plutopia. how the Atomic Energy Commission handled health studies, human beings, the environment, and what a 
Skin care. May I? Uh, an SHIT show it was. So if you're telling me that the Atomic Energy Commission handled and dumped there, and you're telling me they're recharacterizing the site, I'd say don't go near it. Just from what I've learned in the last three years about what I've seen, Right, that, I mean, it's right, 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 beside, it's right, right beside the Blue River, like so, right the, right the, the one side of the landfill, yeah. the distance between one side of the landfill to the, to the Blue River okay. is like a tenth of the size of the distance between the one side of the landfill and the other one. So has there been groundwater studies? The uh, yeah. EPA, we, I just found this out recently, okay. the EPA is, is checking for, uh, what, what's it? I forget what they're checking for, but they're not checking the Blue River. They're checking once the Blue River river merges into the Missouri River, okay. ultimately 28 miles <laughs> from <laughs> Okay, so is your, is your question when I buy a house there? Like, what's your question? What, what do you owe? It's not on the black side of But what I, what I, yeah, right, exactly right. What I would say is this. I would say, aside from the EPA and its Region 7, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, I would I would want an independent group in to test. I want to know groundwater studies. I want to know soil studies. I would not trust. From what I've seen Region 7 do at the landfill, for example, I'll give you an example. I, I mentioned this in other q and but I'll just give you a little tiny example. Remember in the film when Gina McCarthy says, our air monitors? Our, our air, O U R air monitors? Yeah. And then you have Brad Van say, well, our monitors, whatever. Right? Okay. I asked the EPA on the phone, are those your air monitors? And they said, no. And I said, Who air, whose air monitors are they? They're the, they're the, the responsible parties. I said, the polluters? <laughs> I said, you're relying on their data? I said, wait. Are you doing split sampling? Meaning, let them listen. I'm not going to say that they're lying liars. Or when you test, when they do the air monitor, are you doing split sampling? Meaning, they take a sample of it and you take it and you get it tested independently. He said no. I said why is that? Cost. So they're relying in that with that conversation. They're relying on Republic and the PRPs to give them the data. Is that a regulating authority to you, sir? Is that what regulators are supposed to do? That's asking the fox to regulate the hen house. Exactly. So, so, this, so, what? I, all I can say is this: I would want an independent bunch of eyes, and I mean certified. I don't mean just get your friends and your, you know, some organization to test for you. I would want maybe a university, maybe radio chemists that are out of state. I want someone in there independently to come in and verify because. What I see, the shenanigans, uh, you know, and on the same side, on the fire side of the landfill, you have the Department of, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Their job is to protect the resources of Missourians, correct? Okay. So, so they're supposed to have their eyes on the fire side of the landfill. And what I noticed was, because we were waiting for reports to come out, and we're going to go to the website, it's letter and kind, and okay. I'm like, I haven't seen a report from the from the fire experts for a long time. It's been only like close to two years, like a year and a half. Maybe. What's going on here? But Republic would put out their monthly data. I didn't see any site visits or hear of any site visits from these fire experts, which the state brought in at times. I didn't see them write reports, looking and analyzing Republic's reports. And when it came down to it, it was almost like a year and a half, almost two years, don't quote me, but around that time where there wasn't even the state fire experts with their eye on the landfill. So who's regulating that side? So I think these regulators, I have real concerns about the regulating authorities in this state. And I come from a state where GE dumped, I mean, I come from New York State, the most crooked state of the union, probably, one of them. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm not coming from yeah. fabulous America. Um, I'm coming from a place where, you know, there's shenanigans all over the place. But I am very concerned after making this film about the regulatory authorities that have jurisdiction in this, in this state. Um, the Army Corps, they go and they test, they do their thing. I can't speak to that. But are the regulating authorities, 
I don't see them. I, I don't know what regulating is going on right now. I really don't. So I would tell you to well, just one, one, yeah. just one other thing. So there's a guy named Evan Smalley. I don't think he's here tonight. Uh, uh, he started a Facebook group called Bannister Federal Complex Water Testing that is, people might want to. And so the EPA is testing 28 miles downstream, but, but the state and the city are testing, not, not having anything related to the, you know, they're not are testing. Are they doing grid testing? Are they gridding it? Or are they well, stepping out? I, I, I don't know. I mean, like for example, they're making their data very, all I understand is Missouri makes their data very hard wait, to get. Wait, this is soil data? Yeah. No, water. Water data. Oh, okay, it's water data. Okay, I see water testing. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's the largest, yeah. it's the largest uh, Superfund site in the country, but the way they dealt with it is they divided it up into seven yeah. different ones, and then they went away. Yeah. So they're not the Superfund sites yeah. anymore. They removed so, the status, the Superfund status, and then the Superfund uh, site, for the last 70 years, and when the transfer comes, they remove it. But uh, mm -hmm. I want you to understand, because you said something very good, that people in Kansas City ought to understand. This is Region 7. This is Region 7. The politics of Region 7, everyone needs to be hung. And you can tell them where it's hope to send them. Carl Brooks, the EPA. He's gone. No. When did he leave? Now see that? You can tell me. He left me before I gave you an interview. He left. And also, Jason Plum, mm -hmm. oh. say it, he's gone. Brad Van left. And who does he work for? He worked for the contracting party, the center point. Now he's a lawyer at the center point. He was the one that was going to make the decision on who got the contract. And now, all of a sudden, he quits and he's going to work for the contracting party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People in the city, get your hands together, and we need to build these Well, I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not the old CI. I'm sure there are lovely people at the EPA working very hard. I, I mean, I can't paint everyone with the same brush, and I, I don't want to do that. But from what, in my experience, what I've observed in the last few years doing this film, I would have very serious concerns about trusting the regulating authorities in this film. That doesn't mean they can't turn around and do it right, but I would personally get, get certified testers to start dealing with, you know, if I was going to spend a lot of time in proximity, personally. Right. Trust, but verify. Um, James had her hand up forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Seeing the group gatherings in St. Louis was overwhelming to me because I'm sorry, can you speak a little? I'm sorry. Pardon me. Okay. Can you speak a little? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Seeing the group gatherings depicted in St. Louis reminded me of the gatherings we used to have of people who had worked at Bannister Federal Complex on either side, either the Kansas City plant side or the general GSA, Army Corps of Engineers, Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, you name it, they had it out there. And many, many people were sick and they were telling stories about family members that were sick and we brought in a beautiful nurse practitioner, we brought in a person who knows a whole lot about toxins and contaminants. And what happened was that they would amass all their medical documents and say, yes, we were there at the Astor Federal Complex when this spill happened or when that radioactive mistake happened. We were around there. And their doctors would be confirming, okay, it's logical that your cancer came from that. Well, time and again, those people would have to come and justify to a, an administrator, not a lawyer, but an administrator, that they had to come through a special hearing. And then that would be rejected. And then they would try again. And it wore us down. <laughs> now, partly with your film, and partly with Anne's work with people in St. Louis, we are getting a new energy again and saying, we need to talk to people like Deborah Peniston. We need to talk to people who haven't gone through that miserable request for funding from the federal government. We think that uh, Energy Employees Occupational Illness Compensation Program Act. Uh, we think that that's going to help the people who become sick and their family members to get some restitution. It's a severe struggle. But what we can do is to keep on shining the light on it. 
And so when Maurice was saying, we want to help you. We want to help you. We want to help St. Louis. Yeah. We want to join in. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, just, okay, um, and what, uh, what do you think? I think that while Kansas City has its own very specific issues that you have to focus on, you know this place. I, I hate to see this side of the state and this side of the state, right? You know, and I'd love to see, well, you know, groups, you know, you know your own backyard and you have to fight with them. I'd love to see, I think, stronger power in numbers. You people are all, forget saying, I know you have baseball team, I know there's a lot of, but you're all, you're all Missourians, right? So if all Missourians are calling Jeff City, if they're calling their senators, if they're calling their reps, if they're calling the governor, if they're saying, I'm in Kansas City and I've got this on my toilet seat, but the people in say, like, like, as, a, as Missourians, I'd love to see the two ends of the state come together. And there's already a mechanism that the St. Louis people have set up in terms of connecting people. So there's already a way to do that dynamically. So I think it's totally possible. And the only thing I can think of is, we're going back to St. Louis. If someone has a piece of paper or just people want to sign their names to it and email addresses, I can bring it to the to the St. Louisans and maybe they can reach out and make it easier for you since you're not connected to them. So if, if people just want to like write on a piece of paper or hand it, then great, then, then we can give that directly to them. Um, and, and that may help make it go a little faster. This gentleman has hand, let me can Okay, no, I uh, just wanted to make a comment. Sure. I think uh, if we as conscious people can think that we can trust any of the federal, state, or even city uh, agencies or entities to protect us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sadly mistaken. I think we saw in the list of credits in your film all of the state and uh, 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 federal officials who refuse to even answer your questions. Uh -huh. If that's any indication, you know, of. of However, but let me, this is a super important point because we have a lot more power. Mm -hmm. I'm a filmmaker. I'm media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we, they, so they perceive us as media. So they're not going to give me the time of day. You're a Missourian. Yeah. You're a constituent. You go. Oh, I've been knocking on the doors about a lot of issues. Right. And even though what McCaskill, Wagner, and Clay wouldn't go on camera with us, guess what? When just them fought and forced and got to them, they wrote a letter on their behalf to the EPA. You can force and fight and get your representatives to represent you because you've got the vote and you're Missourians. You have way more power and you are way more interesting to them than I've ever been. Been beating the bush so, for 40 years, so I've got a variety of So I don't want you to think that because we couldn't get somewhere you want. No, I think the opposite. I think you're going to get somewhere way faster than we ever No, I'm saying we can't trust. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Are people really going to concur with your statement about getting everybody's emails? Like I said, I don't really have a dog in this fight myself much anymore, but if those of you who really care about this, you should be capturing the contact information of everybody in this room if you haven't already done so. That's, I mean, that's something that we used to do all the time and before they came in. It's too late to do it sooner, but do it well, now before these people leave. Well, if sign something now, we'll take it back to St. Louis with but, us. I mean, somebody has to proactively go get, it isn't just going to happen. And, Whoever is out there to do it, yeah. let's get there and stand at the door and capture them from people. Thank you all for coming. We really yeah. appreciate your show of support. Oh, and we want you to check out atomichomefront.film is the website for the film. And tell your friends about it. It should be coming out uh, January 1st of now. Right. Of this they don't year. Yeah. Somewhere in there. But we have a lot of information on the website. For example, if you do have a concern about your house in proximity, we have information about how to get your home tested. You go through certified. We have information if you want to reach out to co work group and the Just Moms as well on your own. If you don't remember their web pages, just go to atomichomefront.com. We have their information there as well. It's very easy to get in touch with them that way. So that's what we're doing. Here. Yeah. It, just, it just starts with a small amount of people. If everybody here tells somebody and be proactive and reach out and make a difference. I can't tell you. I was asked if I wanted to be part of a lawsuit for my son. I was one of the first 11 people contacted to have that lawsuit. And I said, no, um, I want more. 